got the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 12 of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian WWE podcast that reacts and discusses to Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown Live from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten, and read your fan questions that you've tweeted in to the show. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash nhbwp or on the spreaker app available for all android and apple devices after we are done recording the podcast is posted in full on spreaker itself on our youtube channel youtube.com slash nhbwr or on itunes and stitcher radio so go check us out wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen to us you can follow the podcast on twitter at no holds bar wp and join in on the conversation having your questions read right here later on on the show we are also able to follow on facebook and instagram by searching up no holds bar wp all one word all links will be provided for you in the description below on the youtube version of this podcast i am your host the self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters and i am not joined in the studio today by corporate cappy if you've read the news on our official twitter account corporate cappy is taking a leave effective immediately due to work interference um Basically, summer work right now is really tough for him to commit to the podcast, and I understand where he's coming from, and uh, as we should all, man, it, it's tough to commit to something when you, you, you're so busy at work, and I can't believe the, the amount of stuff I do for this podcast when I'm busy at work. It's crazy. Um, uh, but he'll be back in September, hopefully, and we'll, he'll show up for our SummerSlam predictions and reviews, uh, most likely, too, so he'll still be around and hopefully back full-time with us in September, so good luck to him and his job right now. It's a big boy job. Um. Guys, one way to support the podcast, I'm actually canceling the other way. Uh, uh, Patreon will be taken down. I, I, for some reason, we I got asked to put it up. No one signed up for it. So whoever, I don't remember who did ask us to have it up. I'm just, I'm just going to cancel it because it's useless just sitting there. So, But we will have GoFundMe still available. GoFundMe is a page dedicated to us, myself, and Corporate Copy getting to a WrestleMania next year. We have the entire story, uh, our story, right on the GoFundMe page. So go... Uh, head to gofundme.com or gofundme uh dot com slash nhbwp and it will be entitled go or uh, nhb to mania and the link will also be down in the description below on youtube if you get lost so that'll be the only way to support the podcast from now on uh myself i'll be doing uh the lowdown show uh when i can if not we'll be doing i'll be doing actually live shows right after raw and smackdown when from time to time when i do have time and it'll exclusively be on YouTube Live, actually. So if I do Raw or SmackDown reviews right after the show, it'll be just on YouTube Live. And then after, I'll post it on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher, and all that stuff right after. So it'll be exclusive to YouTube Live, like the Sunday Night Heat will be starting this Sunday. Also, if you don't know, WWE World Cup is now available on YouTube. It is a 2K17 tournament series I'm doing right now. Round one of the North American bracket. So there's two brackets, North American bracket and the rest of the world bracket. And the Superstars are in their respective brackets go follow it it's actually a twitter page for it uh, at wb world cup 2k and right now on our youtube page round one uh, for the north maker bracket is up all four matches so go check it out with round one of the rest of the world bracket coming this saturday so stay tuned for that lots of exciting things with that um round one unfortunately i didn't do any commentary for i will be starting round two and throughout the tournament afterwards so i apologize for the generic wb michael cole crappy commentary you're going to get with the first round um Last part here, uh, Blast from the Past Episode 2 is in the works right now. I'm still trying to get time to do that to cover No Mercy 2000 and then heading into WrestleMania 2000. So look out for Blast from the Past Episode 2 coming soon as well. Um, so today I will not be doing the show alone, actually. I'll actually be having a uh, special co-host calling in in a second here once my Windows computer stuff's being... Uh, Difficult here. Okay, so I, I've asked him to call in. He'll be my special co-host for the show today, and that is none other than Tyler Jones. Tyler Jones, say hello. How's it going, my fine Canadian friend? <laughs> yeah, he is our special co-host today. 
Yeah, we'll see if I can uh, fill the shoes that Mr. Corporate left. I mean, you know, <laughs> talk, talk, talking about his girls on the podcast every week would throw him into insanity, so uh, I'll, I'll take it over for him, you know. <laughs> that's that's probably what the real reason is. He's not bored. I think that is the real reason. No no job keeps you from this, this great podcast, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he's just afraid. He's afraid. It's okay. It's okay. I will enjoy it, but uh, for him, man, <laughs> three jacket F is all said and done. Uh, yeah, oh, for sure. But, uh... Yeah, I got my opening spiel all the way. Got Tyler Jones patched in. Greg is in the chat. What's going on, Greg? Oh, Greg. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's we're gonna try this out here. We got a special coach for the show. So we're gonna do as me and Corporate Cappy did as in our new revamped lowdown show. Is we're just gonna give our reactions to certain things on Raw and SmackDown and discuss certain things. And then we'll get into our list of 10 segment, which is still here. And then we'll get into your fan questions at the end of the show. So that's when we'll be doing those for y'all that are listening right now. Um, I think I got everything out of the way. Yeah, I did. Okay, so we'll start off Monday Night Raw. Uh, we discussed this kind of earlier today. Uh, yep. As we're going through our like uh, kind of pre-show meeting. It, doing, it doing a little meeting, you know, meet up. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that bad, but it was... Uh, it was a little bit better than SmackDown. I kind of have to agree with you. Yeah, with this it, it left a little to be desired. I mean, I think everything in this entire company has something to be desired. But uh, you know, I, I think I think Raw was pretty good this week. I still feel the creative team is better on SmackDown, regardless, though. They, Overall, yeah, yeah, no the, doubt. In the in the boardrooms on Raw, like someone's got to stand up and go, "What the hell are we doing, guys? Man, like, what what are we actually?" doing in this third hour that's killing the ratings right now, and we're sitting there going, like, scratching our heads why the ratings are down. Well, when you hire, uh, you know, beat writers and paper writers, that's, this is what you get, you I know. Think, this is... I think l- the, the Ball family was the, definitely yeah, a I'm not... ratings booster. Yeah, I see what Vince was doing there, but n- no thanks. It definitely backfired on him now, man. Apparently, yeah. I just read before the show started that superstars are actually pissed backstage about that whole segment and are like you well, know, wouldn't you I'm, yeah i, I mean, mean you're a superstar and you're yeah. getting paid by wwe and these guys come in probably make two hundred fifty thousand dollars to come make fools yeah. of themselves and these guys are actually trying to make it too, though but i guess it's not i guess people are are, are uh, i guess you can say the term butthurt backstage because <laughs> of the racial slur that was used <laughs> A couple of times. Uh, you know, everybody blows it out of proportion. I mean, you know, LaMelo Ball is 16 years old. I get it. I mean, it shouldn't have been said on national TV, but, you know, it's mistakes happen. He was just being a kid, a dumb kid, but a kid. This also goes back to what, like, Stone Cold was saying in his podcast. I forget which podcast it was, but he's saying he thinks the locker room in the back right now is was extremely more sensitive now to everything. Well, I mean, just then. just look at, I mean, it's just our generation in general. I mean, as a millennial, I mean, we, we do work a little smarter, not harder. Yeah. And I think the older generation definitely doesn't like that. And, and they do, a lot of people do get butthurt over little things. I, I think it's ridiculous, but a lot of people do get butthurt over that little stuff. And I mean, it's understandable to a point, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's not like they were getting it directed towards them, or it wasn't directed towards Miz, really. I mean, it was just some stupid yeah. he said. And, and, you and, know. and you knew the backlash was coming out, too, about uh, oh, yeah. how Vince saying that he hated it. Meanwhile, there's that... It, 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 I knew the video was going to get circulated around again. It's back when John Cena was back in his chain gang days, and then he, like... Said he said what's up to John Cena like in the back parking lot, and then he actually said the words like what's up, you know, my n word, and, right? And that was on live TV, and then everyone's like, well, Vince, man, if you're not okay with that, what about this? You know, they always they, they and we can go back to the to the Booker T when he messed up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> come for you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I won't Hulk say it on this podcast. <laughs> I don't want to get any hate. No, no, nah, nah. probably probably not a good idea. No, um. But as for Raw, yeah, it was it was better than SmackDown this week, but it, again, it had its downfalls, and there was a lot this week. Um, uh, we'll go over like the the highlights, I guess, for uh, I guess the uh, what's it called the, the yeah, we'll just go, we'll go over the we'll react to what, what was good on Raw this week. And yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> it obviously goes to, right off the bat and right off the top of my head is is Braun Strowman. He literally was the highlight that, of Monday Night Raw. That was probably the best opening segment 
in a long time. Regardless of how good Samoa Joe and Lesnar is, and that was, that was too obvious. Everyone knew it was going to be good before it even yeah. started. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What Braun Strowman is doing with Roman Reigns right now is probably the best thing I've ever seen. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I, I think it's just this these two work well together. And I remember hearing in a couple other podcasts, people are a lot of saying, like, this is the feud that Roman needs right now because if he didn't have Braun Strowman, it would be literally a spinning toilet for Roman Reigns right now, a slowly spinning toilet. I, I think Braun Strowman is kind of saving Roman Reigns right now at the moment. And it's it's actually producing good television because you don't want to see, what, a, a Miz and Roman Reigns. That was the rumored feud that was going to happen. I really oh, didn't God. See. That would have been horrible. That would have been terrible. Doing, this Braun Strowman is awesome. And, and just best part of Raw this week was Roman Reigns getting <laughs> lawn darted directly into the side of the ambulance. That was probably the best thing I've ever seen. I mean, it's bad to say for a human being, but that was freaking hilarious. And then your highlighted part of uh, uh, Strowman literally hucking him across he the stage. He chucked him 10 feet onto the stage. <laughs> that, that doesn't show pounds. you how strong Braun yeah. Strowman is, I don't know what else does. I mean, I know the ambulance flip proved it, but, I mean, chucking a guy who's almost 300 pounds 10 to 15 feet up yeah. – Probably another seven feet. Yeah, yeah. N- no thanks. Roman, Roman Reigns is not a feather, ladies and gentlemen. He's not. He doesn't. No, he's a big guy. He's not a loaf of bread. He's hucking across the stage. That's a, it's a 250 pound guy. And he just hucked the clear across the stage. Yeah, I can hate on Roman for days, but the guy is physically built. I yeah. mean, he's a big dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that was one of the literally the key highlights of Monday Raw. That was probably the best part for me. That was the opening segment. Sadly enough. And then the crowd chanting, we want Strowman. I was dying. <laughs> I was dying. Uh, what a way to get Strowman over is to have him feud with Roman Reigns because they know he'll get an instant good reaction. He still gets like, his booze from the, the Roman fangirls and the kids. but Oh, that, yeah. That's that's normal. It's inevitable. Yeah. yeah. Um, But going into their match for Great Balls of Fire... Or ambulance match. That's going to be... Uh, see, I'm pretty I, excited for it. It's going to be a good match, I'm I think. I'm excited, but the, the history of the ambulance matches, I, I can I think of one good one to date, and that was literally a long time ago. There hasn't been right. an ambulance match since 2003, and that was back when Shane and Kane had theirs, and I actually love that one. Um, I did yeah, like... that was a good one. With, uh, I think it was, was it Cena and Ryback, where I think Cena F-U'd Ryback through the top of the ambulance, and he went inside. Um but I still think the match even before leading up to that was still crap. So I don't know. I'm not right. scared, but I, I, seeing these guys feud so far, I think we're actually going to get a great ambulance match. Look what they've done so far. Just put the ambulance alone. Like, <laughs> right. I mean, Roman, Roman is a, is a decent worker and Braun has proven, I mean, he's still green, but he has proven that he can work and, and he can do those moves for a big guy. So, yeah. so I, I'm going to be, I think my favorite thing is going to be seeing if Roman can chuck Braun into an ambulance. That's going to be the interesting thing. I mean, it, he'll probably Superman punch him over the top rope into it. I mean, something dumb, I'm <laughs> sure. But, you know, I, yeah. I, we all know what's going to happen. Unless they do what everybody's clamoring for and, you know, break break Reigns down. Make him lose a little bit. And maybe people will start saying, okay, if he loses some, maybe we got, you know, if he dies a little bit, yeah. dies down, let him go low for a little while and build him back up a little slower and not shove him down your throat because he's not a, sh- a throat shover he's not good enough to be a throat shover i think if they want to do the rumored later on in the year club versus shield they're going to need to do that to roman or else it's going to ruin the the shit right because they're just going to boo the shit out of roman reigns and it's not going to be uh, they're obviously going to be making the shield face and baby face in that situation and you're not going to right. with a booing roman reigns it's it's really hard to do people love the shield before they split up man they're like oh, yeah. a baby face team in, in a while so I think if you're if you're going to get Roman back into that state, you're going to need to do what you just did. You need to die him down a little bit and kind right. of him low. And Which I think they're kind of going that way because Braun, they they got to push Braun. I mean, he is money right now. Oh, if you don't push him right now, he's he's it's going to die off, and the hype isn't going to quite be there. I think they're trying to build up for Braun to go against Lesnar at Mania or or something like that. Maybe That's Cena crazy. at Mania, so, something something like that. I don't know. Yeah. You know specifics, but I think they're they're pushing Braun for this year, which is fine. I mean, it may be a little early for him, but we'll see. I think he's going to do all right. I hope so. Um, 
Another good part of Raw this week, and obviously it's you know, what a lot of people like to talk about, are only talking about from this week is is what happened to Brock Lesnar, which completely shocked me because I I I, I like yeah I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I like the idea of getting choked, and I'm sitting there expecting okay when's Brock gonna turn around and like jump on and on, on Joe and they're gonna battle back and forth, but no, this week we didn't get that case. We got a full out choke out. By Samoa Joe and Lesnar going, Jesus, like, that's the Coquina clutch? Like, that's what I'm up against? That's yeah, actually- Lesnar tried to Lesnar tried to, to go back at him and push him yeah. into the, the screen. They almost broke that whole screen. I'm like, oh, man, that would be insane if that thing falls down. But that was great. That was great. It was, a, it was very surprising. I didn't expect it either. I didn't expect, um, I didn't expect Joe to come out and just Coquina clutch him right off the bat. You know, who, who would have thought that they would have let – Lesnar get taken out like that. I hope they continue after Great Balls of Fire. They need to. I'd love to see think, a rematch between these guys at SummerSlam. Have it like a yeah. stipulation added to it. My thing, I think they're doing this feud a little early. Um, I think that I wish they would have done it at SummerSlam and then let it kind of ride out until probably mid January or so, right before you know a yeah. couple months before Mania. But but I mean, I'm okay with it to a certain point, just because it is going to be. It, it's going to make Great Balls of Fire a good pay per view. Just that yeah. match. <laughs> I'm terrible pay per view name. I still can't believe they use that name. You know what's funny though? The pay- the pay per view name is awful. But I think this I'm most excited for this pay per view than any I've ever like this year. I've been excited for or in the past six months or so I've because the rest read, of them are garbage. I've read that they're actually thinking about making this a recurring pay per view because they want to get a deal with Jerry Lee Lewis to I- include that song every time they have that pay per view. I, I think it's all right. I mean, it's not the greatest. I wish they would update the logo. You know, but. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not. They're trying to be P, P, uh, PG. I get it. I'm not. I'm not hating on them. They can't do any more blood and yeah. death and all this crazy stuff like they used to do. I mean, it's it's just it's a new world. So I, I get it. Yeah. Joe and Lesnar. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a good match. I I I'm very very excited for it. I really don't want to get my hopes up. And I hope they don't give Same. us a, a crappy ending to that match. I really hope it. If it's going to be a one-off, they actually give us something. Like I don't know what's going on with uh, with Lesnar's Universal Title picture going into uh, SummerSlam. Like it could be, it could be. We don't know. Like well, we know that Rome Reigns says he's going to challenge the the Universal whoever the Universal Champion is at SummerSlam. If they're gonna go in, okay. The only thing I agree with is that they're going. If they go in the direction of Brock and Roman at SummerSlam, that get that literally scratches out WrestleMania next year. And I did read that there to be wants that scratch for next year, wants to push it for this year SummerSlam because next year they want to do uh, Roman Reigns versus John Cena at WrestleMania, the one we're going to. <laughs> right. And I would, I'd much rather see that than Brock Lesnar Roman Reigns again. Oh yeah. See, my thing is with Lesnar is, you know, they 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 had him beat Undertaker streak. So I mean, he had to be the guy. Then he left, and then he comes back, and it's, uh, you know, he's kind of he's dying off for me just because he's never here. He's ruined the Universal Title no. because he it, hasn't it defended it in I, six months. You know, yeah. so it doesn't make any sense in that instance. My thing is, is I don't, you know, I'm okay. With Le- or what I was saying was that I don't think that they're go- the way that they did Reigns and Joe with that pre-match and then when Strowman comes out it almost makes me think that they might have Joe win and then then they might have Joe against you know uh, Lesnar at SummerSlam like you said in a stipulation or something and then Reigns will take on whoever wins that which I think Lesnar would win it back obviously and then take it into WrestleMania. Oh God, there's so many different ways I could do it and I hope they do. Yeah, there really is. I always say that. Like, I always say this before every like good predicament that could happen. I was like, okay, I hope WWE does a smart thing. They never do, so I don't know why I keep saying Yeah, that. I'm not going to get my, my hopes up just yeah. because it is Vince and his cronies, so I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to get my hopes up quite yet. We'll, we'll wait and see. <laughs> One SummerSlam match that uh, I'm excited for, actually. I know you are excited for, but unfortunately our co-host is not, or uh, our regular co-host is not excited for, is uh, the women's title match now set in stone for Great Balls of Fire and possibly SummerSlam rematch, I read today. They could be doing a, a little double out here. Um, and that's now we get Sasha Banks, number one contender for Alexa Bliss's title. And this is another one I think it's, I think it's too soon. But yeah. I'm okay with them doing it if they let it go for a good six months. I think this is a feud that could last six months. They've got a lot they can play with here. 
I so I mean, if you can, <laughs> I I agree. I think that or Naya, I could, I could see Naya being thrown yeah. in there too. She hasn't given her chance yet, and I, I really thought Naya was going to win Monday night. I beast, she was killing everybody. Oh, oh she is God. a beast. I mean, she is a beast. She's a if she's this a killer. Didn't prove that she's like, you know, she belongs there. Then to the Naya haters, I don't know what you're talking about, man. This this girl is. Uh, I, she's I, not my I, personal I, favorite, I, but she's yeah. great. I've she's gonna be great, past, it, but she's she's getting better. Like she's proven herself, and I'm actually enjoying it. Like in what just this week alone, I was like, oh my god! Like <laughs> this girl has like the the potential to be someone dominant here if they they can push her the right way and and direct her in the right way. But knowing Raw and their women's division, man, I'm I'm skeptical of that. Um, right. I mean, Nia, they could make Nia into the Braun Strowman of the women's division and just have her just literally lay out everybody in her path. But, uh, yep. Yeah, be pulling the trigger again. What else is new? Getting, uh, <laughs> ba- or getting the gun. Sasha and Alexa already. Why couldn't they just wait until SummerSlam? It's literally your next, like, where the, the, the roster are going to be on paper for you next is going to be right. at SummerSlam. Why couldn't they just wait till then? Oh my god! Yeah, I, I didn't really understand that either. Yeah, Michael Chow just joined the chat. Just getting on. What's going on, Michael Chow? Michael Chow. Michael Chow is to update. We just started the lowdown show. Um, we went over Braun Roman already and Joe Lesnar. We're on the topic of the women's Raw division <laughs> and uh, how Cooper Cappy would. Oh, he's losing his shit. I I, I can't even. I, I really wish I could have seen his initial reaction for this week. <laughs> I heard it. Uh, it was. Uh... Yeah, it was it was a mixture of okay and death. Like he did not know what to do. Like he he was silent for a little bit, and then it was oh man. <laughs> what he goes for like I want to know deep down who's I think to me it's got to be Sasha, right? Got to go for his home, his first girl. He got to go for Sasha. That's not, he's got to be Sasha. That's the original. I mean, it would be like if Trish comes out, he would tell both of those two to take a seat. Yeah. So uh, you know, I think that, that I think he's gonna go Sasha deep down. He won't say it, but he'll—that's what he thinks. He's gonna if do. it was like Paige and Bailey, I, I think I'd still go for Paige. Oh, it would suck though, because like I'm a huge Bailey supporter. I just hate how they're being used right now. Just, and yeah, uh, Bailey's you know, great, but she it is the guest it is the guest host the Nashville <laughs> the Nashville boys. It's just one of them, Tyler Jones, <laughs> the co-host for today. Got to get a little bit of Southern slang in here, you know. Got to, got to, got to liven this party up a little bit, fresh, you know. You Canadians, podcast man. Yeah, yeah. Got to get a little fresh. <laughs> but yeah, the women's division, you know, it's uh, it's slightly getting better, you know, with the the rumors of Paige uh, mm-hmm. getting better and the like, getting herself in the gym, training for a return, and I don't know what the hell is going on with the Del Rio situation. Yeah, if, I think she needs to stay away from him and keep focusing on her career. I, I don't mean, WWE's right not. there. She tweeted. While this news was getting broken out, saying everyone to like relax, so I don't know if it's true or not, and it was just something blown out of proportion. Like they had a fight, and then someone just tweeted it right away, saying, "Oh my God, they broke up," and then it just spread, which usually nine times out of ten, that's what exactly happened. Right. But, um, Anything is possible in that kind of situation. I don't think her relationship with Delrio is healthy for her right now. I don't. I, I, I agree. I think it's. I don't, just don't. I just things. It's just. He's awful. trying to drive her to TNA, and she TNA is to awful. See the light that. Her career in WWE could be so much more, and she has so much potential, and she's such a young age. <laughs> yeah, we need a credible woman, he- another credible woman it's great here. When she like, she's the first ever woman to hold both NXT and women's title yeah. at the same time, and right. she won on her first night. Like, how do you how do you not get a, a, a how do you not build a career from that? You yeah, know? I don't understand that whole thing either. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense why. Wait, I mean, she's had some problems with the whole videotapes being released and pictures and all that. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they wanted to hide her out for a little while, but I, it's 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 about time now. Yeah, Michael Chow and Chad thinks that Emma should have won. I think I would have loved Emma versus Alexa Bliss at Grey Bells of Fire and then lead to Sasha Banks into like Sasha Banks Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam better than the the, the quick trigger we're getting now. Um, I mean, I really thought I really was kind of hoping for Nia. I mean, give give Nia that push for a little bit, let her ride it through till SummerSlam, let her have the rematch at SummerSlam, and then the next big pay per view, you know, let him let Sasha and Lexi go at it yeah. till WrestleMania because yeah. that would be a good WrestleMania match. That's good. Dana Brooks just useless. My God, I can't even. I can't. I mean, she's hot, but I can't. Yeah, she sucks. She can't wrestle. No wonder they made her lose in like two seconds, man. Just that whole somersault thing is just. It's annoying. <laughs> what is that guy? What? Is, what 
how do you and then you flex right after what <laughs> what are you trying to well, tell I us I meant, I meant we're in the ring when she does that flip and like back flips him into the corner oh yeah like when oh, Nia oh, took her and slammed man. her to the ground I'm like how does that would happen every time that's not oh, a good she's, move she's cringe man and I know Mickey's there just to pe- put people over she looked good still and she's god she's old and and she can still move like that and that's incredible for Mickey um She's just there to put people over, yeah, which not, is fine. She's not gonna have any more than fine anytime soon. No, um, but uh, let's move on here. Uh, I it was okay. I mean, we 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 both agreed the match was good. It was just the booking is is lazy. Uh, we had Hardys and Balor team up this week, and they which is a good match. But I'm so yeah. tired of this stupid feud already. And yeah. I love the Hardys, but I'm so tired of this. It's boring. It's, it, it, we 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 could say that, it, but we're we're sitting here looking back at, at the big picture here, and they're splitting up the other teams. Uh, well, I know that's I I've been saying for a couple weeks now. Like, it almost looks like WWE is trying to kill tag team wrestling. Like they they're breaking all the through. teams up. They're they're not built, putting any new ones in. I mean, the revival's healthy, but that's the one team they've got. And you even look at NXT. There's only two credible tag the teams down there. Week. That's a good idea. What the hell were they? They're healthy. They're cleared to wrestle. Where the, where the hell yeah. are they? I, I don't know. The club were on main event. <laughs> That's where they were. I saw someone tweet out the picture. They are wrestling on main event. That's who oh. they, they probably had a, a club and revival match on main event. Ugh. Main event! <laughs> and that's actually a good match I'd want to see. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> but we got, no, we got the Hardys and Sheamus and Cesaro for like the 900th time, but now we're going to add Balor and Samson with for some flavor there. And Which I, I mean, two I, great wrestlers. I love Samson right now, and Balor yeah. is, is at the top of his game. He looks really good. But I think it, WWE sees the potential in Samson now. I think they're really, really... They should! Guy. Um, they should. He's a good wrestler, I admit. And he, he generates he's a curious. really good wrestler. Uh, I love the entrance. The one part where the the Hardys were doing the entrance with Finn Balor and the, the, the that was cool. Spot. That was very he, cool. <laughs> he's doing the ah uh, thing like at the same time Balor does his <laughs> thing. That was great. Um, Hardys becoming broken, broken even more now, even on social media, like more than they used to. I think it almost looks like they're getting close to a deal. Yeah. I think it's SummerSlam. We're gonna probably gonna get the fully broken thing. I think that's what they're aiming for. So I think we kind of have to ride it out until then, which sucks because we have to wait another month. But um, then a year from now they'll split them up, which yeah. is, I mean, it's inevitable. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, match. What did it do for anyone? Nothing. No. So uh, Cesaro and Sheamus. Did they win? No. They lost. Yeah. They did lose, yes. Yeah. It was the Hardys and then Balor. Balor basically yeah. got knocked out the first five minutes of the match, came in and absolutely destroyed yeah. everybody in the last two minutes of the match. So I mean, he looked great, but... He had a good match, just lazy booking. They just they just saw it two was. feuds and just said, oh, we'll just combine them. Oh, we'll combine those two. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. When they run out of, they run out of ideas for a Raw episode, they're just like, shit, we'll just throw all the rest of the guys in a tag team match. It seems like what they do every we- week. Oh yeah, that's their go-to. Is let's have a six six-person tag match. That sounds great. Let's just, that's where let's you can see. tell you're there and you're yeah. there and there's another tag team. Tag. All right, you guys just go out there and fight. The script is right. It's yeah. written on the wall there. That's where you can point out the lazy spot, especially the freaking. Oh my god, I mean it's not lazy. Whoever thought of the whole ball family thing to be on Raw this week was probably they should be fired, man. That was probably the worst thing I've ever seen. Even if they didn't drop end bomb, but I was just what the hell was that? I, it was terrible. And then the match to follow, I, I felt so bad for Rhino. I'm like, God, look at all this wasted talent out here. Rhino's the only one other than Miz that has any talent out here. I, I mean, Dean's good, but... I didn't even watch it. Yeah. But I turned it off like midway during that ball segment. You, you should have. It was awful. Yeah. Um, the uh, miz Taraj. The <sighs> miz Taraj. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I, I guarantee you, this has they to... Could- it's got to be Vince, man. Vince is taking it up. Has to. Like, he, he did the welcoming committee. He's doing Ms. Taraj. He's doing Ms. Bear. Dunn's just being the, 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 the big yes man that he is and, and will say yes every single time Vince has an idea. So Vince is going to go along with anyone, especially Dunn, a guy who he sees for everything as a producer. Um, it, it's just sad. It's, it's crappy television. It is. There's no excuse and, for it. And they're, right now, I mean, because we haven't speak to, or talked about it yet, you know, why are they not building another tag team with the Wyatts? 
put Bray with his freaking real life brother. Yeah. He's not doing anything right now. Bray is acting like he's some god and still loses every big match he's ever in. So why don't they just do that and make a really good heel tag team? I think both already Dallas got the look now. Has. Yeah, he, I think he's got the the character in him to. He's got like the acting. He does to act like one. If you look at NXT when Bo Dallas was champion, Bo Dallas could talk. Yeah. I was very impressed. Yeah. But but they've killed him. That's it's just mm. like they did with every other medium based talent. They just ruin them and turn them into jobbers, which is yeah. all they are right now. Yeah. Um. Another thing I didn't like about Rob was the the lack of a, the return heel of Goldust. I mean, it was great to see Gold heel, uh, yeah, heel Goldust, and instead of uh, he, I mean, he didn't have his wig or his robe or anything, which kind of disappointed me. But he had a, a a cameraman, his own cameraman, dressed in gold, which is kind of cool. But other than that, he, there wasn't a match. He just, be, I, I know it's good that he beat the shit out of our truth, and they're they're building a story here, but. I feel they could have just saved this for the pay per view. They could have, they should have saved it for the pay per view. I think it would have meant more of him redebuting heel at the pay per view because to me, like the crowd was dead for it too. Like they were just right. I mean, it's a California crowd. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I agree with that. I mean, I I like that they're they're turning Goldie into a good heel. I mean, that that showed that he was a credible heel. Hide behind the camera person and then throwing the camera person out of the way and attacking our truth before the match even starts. I, I think it was a good a good heel tactic to make Goldie look like a credible heel, which they honestly don't have enough of. Just so I'm okay with them doing long. that, but I do agree with you. They should have probably waited for a pay I love the building to get that, and it's like, ugh. Oh, the vignettes are great. Our it, truths are not very good, but Goldie's it, like, vignettes are great. Oh, it's like laziness. Like, why couldn't you just wait? Why do you got to pull the trigger on everything, do you? Why can't you just wait? See, this Who all goes back to... the people who wait? agree this all comes back to, to there's no competition so yeah. vince can just do whatever he wants and knows that everybody's gonna come back because it's the only show on tv unless you want to watch ring of honor or tna and i don't want to watch ring of honor or tna so i'm gonna watch wwe and get pissed off about it i mean it's the way it is there's no competition there's no room for to fight which is what made the 90s and the attitude era so great was that they were competing with wcw and it made every it made everybody go to the top of their game. It's and so right now, it just seems like everybody is just okay with flatlining and just yeah. being par, par for course. Um, one thing that happened on Raw this week, which is pretty cool, and it literally got both of us because I asked you if it if you if it got you, and you said it got you too. And um, was the whole big cast and Enzo thing, and Enzo was out in the ring, and, he, and big cast comes out. And literally looking bummed out of his mind and asking and basically telling Enzo, like, I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. Like, extends his hand. Everyone's doing the no, no, no thing. I don't trust it, Enzo. And when they when they embraced for that hug, I thought he was actually getting ready to do a move on him. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. Oh, wait, maybe no. It's a hug. Yeah, when, when they hugged and then when he started doing the soft chant, I'm like, yeah. okay, they are actually well, going to put them together. Them together. I, Thank God they're not going to ruin another back tag back head, team. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Did they just realize they fucked up by splitting these Yeah. Guys, and now they're going to just redo this and kind of sweep it under the rug? But then, like, nope. Oh, well, let's just keep ruining it. <laughs> nope, let's go. Let's keep the camera on them, make it obvious as possible, and then right when they get to the top. Yeah, that's, yeah as soon as they kept the camera on them, I'm like, all right, well, never mind. This is going to happen yeah, <laughs> regardless. It should have Enzo. Like, how is... How can I like? How can I like this feud, man? Enzo has never once proven that he's stronger than anybody. How yeah, can what, I like? <laughs> what kind of a fight is this going to be? Cass is yeah. twice, three times his size. Does Enzo think he has it? He's a cruiserweight. Are they going to put Enzo in the cruiserweight division? He's never. They shouldn't. Never, but he's never ever ever look strong against anybody it's always no. Cass helping him so them having a match against each other will be if the, if there's any chance that enzo is gonna look strong we're gonna get the first glimpse of it now against Cass. i don't know what the hell is gonna happen or it's just gonna be the burial of enzo amore like they've always done with him and you know what i'm team. really worried about though kyle is i'm so worried that they're gonna go back to enzo and big show no no Oh, uh, because, you no. know, Big Show versus Cass then, and that would be the feud, yeah. and then Enzo is in, you, you know, Big right. Show's corner. Uh, that's what that's I'm seeing. And I, uh, I don't know who it was, and they said that the, the rumor was Big Show has plans for SummerSlam, and I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I hope his plans are to sit in the fucking crowd, because I don't want him on my TV. 
I mean, it's great that Big Show's in all this great shape and that he's doing it, but he hates being on TV anyway, so just yeah, take him off he TV. He hates the scripts. He said he Blood, hates it. Oh, Blood he's... Stone Cold's podcast, or whoever's podcast it was. That it was Jericho's. Jericho's that The creative podcast. team are idiots, and he hates yeah. the script that you're handed to him. Yeah, he said that he cannot stand doing TV anymore. He's like, I'm out there for two seconds, and then I'm back in. He's like, so I had to travel, come all this way, dress up, get out there and show my face for two seconds and then come back in there and go home. He's like, I'll just, I'd rather just stay home. Right. He's like, I love live events. I like, I'll go to live events all day long, but I, I don't want to be on TV anymore. It's pointless. And I agree with him. It is pointless now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Michael Chow in the chat. And he's like, I want big Cass's t-shirt. I found a ton of the, at the dollar store, solid black shirts. <laughs> Yeah, when he came out in that, I'm like, what are they doing? You couldn't make this guy a quick shirt that just said Cass on it? Big Cass or something. Yeah, like, like, (laughs) you had to he's got a shirt that says Big Cass on it. I'm pretty sure he's gotten one in the past. It's probably just an old Enzo or uh, certified G shirt that he's put inside out. That would have made the reunion a little bit, that would have made more sense. (laughs) They just kind of gave it away. That's kind of like a a soft hint. Oh, it was. Yeah, and I sh- and I should have when I saw when I saw the black shirt. I'm like, okay, I should have I should have yeah. known what was gonna happen. But they still got me with the whole the whole segment. Yeah, uh, Cass needs a new theme. Greg in the chat. Yeah, I think they're yes, CFO agreed. They, they gave him the same fun. theme. You had a week and you couldn't give him a yeah. theme song. <laughs> Maybe they're working on a good one. Maybe CFO Dollar Sign's hard at work. I don't know. Um, I hope yeah, we'll are. see. They for they've produced some good songs in the past, so we'll see. Um. As for the rest of Raw, I mean, pff, I got really nothing else to talk about. We talked about what we needed to. Mm, yeah, Raw. yeah. I mean, there was Rollins and Wyatt, or Rollins versus I care nothing Kurt Hawkins, but I, 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 that I feud do not care I don't about care. Rollins and Wyatt because they they made Bray Wyatt look like the the weakest piece of shit on on the face of the earth. They made they him look really like have weaker than Kurt Hawkins. So I I don't care for Rollins and Wyatt because it does nothing for no. me. No, why do these yeah, guys um, need to feel with each other? That makes no sense. Until Wyatt starts winning some matches against credible people, I just don't care about him anymore. He's a great talker, but he he has lost everything for me because he he can't lose it. He can't fight anymore. They just they they bury him. He, he can is promote getting the shit out of a match, but he loses in the end. Why? Why, yes. why should I care? I, and I'm this god, and you will be, you know, it is, I will blah, blah, blah. He's going to lose to Seth uh, Rollins. I, 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 oh, he's definitely going to lose to Rollins, I because Rollins was pushing on a video on. game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that's terrible. I, they suck. He gets misused so much. <sighs> I just, I think the move for him to Raw is the worst thing for him. I think he should have stayed on SmackDown. They could have done more with him on SmackDown, a lot more. Uh, I mean, they weren't pushing him great, but still. I, I think they could do more with him on SmackDown than they can on Raw. Yeah. Speaking of SmackDown, let's get into SmackDown. Let's 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 react and discuss SmackDown, shall we? And it was okay. Much. It was uh, <laughs> pretty mediocre. lackluster for me this week. <laughs> it was mediocre. I'll give it a mediocre because there was the odd good part, but mostly crap because it was it was, com- it was so commercial heavy. And it, it actually it was yeah. uh, interesting uh, because I was on vacation. I actually had to watch SmackDown from uh, an American stream on my laptop. And this American stream I had had the picture in picture. I got, to, I got to experience the picture in picture for the first time, and that's interesting. I get we us Canadians don't get that. Yeah, dude. Uh, no, I know. And and I was telling Cappy the other night. I'm like, it, it doesn't make any sense because I only get it for some matches. They only do it for the yeah, junk I saw matches. That. Yeah, and, and I, it, <laughs> I'm sitting there going, I'm like, oh man, I wish I could actually like enlarge the little screen and mute. Yeah, the so, like you can have the commercial right. playing, but I want to listen to the match. <laughs> Um, and it was weird because it was during the the Usos and uh, Hype Bros match that as soon as it went right back, the match yeah. lasted two seconds. It was it right comes back God, commercial break and the match is over. I'm like, what the terrible. hell? <laughs> what terrible! I, it made no placement. sense to me. Like, okay, hey, we're gonna like I was given Cappy play by play because he couldn't see the the picture picture. They of course they do the Hype Bros match, but they don't do the Money in the Bank match. Makes yeah. total sense. And they had more you know, than that match in the whole show. Yeah, there was like three commercials for yeah. a 30-minute dang segment. Come on. You it, couldn't have got those out of the way earlier? Right. SmackDown, I feel like, has way more commercials even than Monday Night Raw. Raw's a three-hour show. I honestly feel SmackDown has way more commercials than it should for a two-hour show. It's Which ridiculous. is probably by design, you know, because everybody gets on there for Raw, and then SmackDown is kind of the baby brother, and so they got to get the short end of the shaft. Yeah. But they're two hours. 
Yeah. You can't do that to a two-hour show. No, you can't make a lot of 45, 30 to 45 minutes of commercials and then have an hour and a half show. It doesn't make sense. And you got people on the SmackDown roster who don't do anything and are either subject to the dark match or are not even there at all in, in any form, even though they're 100% perfectly healthy, a.k.a. Ty Dillinger, a.k.a. American Alpha, a.k.a. I mean, Ascension had a, a backstage segment, but that's filmed. They, they probably weren't even in the arena. The fact that Aiden English got out there, and I was telling Cappy, I'm like, oh, well, hey, at least we get to see Ty on TV this week. Nope, let's get Randy Orton out here to beat him, to give him an RKO. So, Are you so kidding me? me? So let me get this straight. We get Randy Orton and Aiden English on SmackDown as a useless match, and Seth Rollins and Kurt Hawkins as a useless, useless. match on Raw. What the fuck? Why? I what don't does that understand. do for anything? Why do we have to have showcases for guys that are, like, so far in their career? It's <laughs> so and stupid. Ty Dillinger was probably in another 8-10 yeah, to ten yeah, man no, tag match dark in match. a he's, dark... He's, you know, the, he's the perfect dark match. That's what he is. And it sucks. He's the, boy, <laughs> he's the perfect guy. dark match. He's been following this guy for his entire goddamn career. He's finally getting his call to the main roster and they don't use him. They used him for, like, three weeks. Like, it's really kicking the balls to me. And I feel bad for the guy. The guy's worked literally the hardest. And I had a fucking Twitter war with someone. It was it yesterday about Ty Dillinger. And this guy's telling me that Dillinger is, like, nothing. And he'll 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 he'll, he'll, he'll die out. And he's not – he's trying to tell me that he's not over right now. Like, do you, and me – and Cronin joined it. And he's like, do you, do you listen to Raw or SmackDown? Like, do you actually, like, watch it and listen to the 10 chants that happen every single show? If they use this guy properly in the proper feud, he would be money. I don't understand. Oh, I agree. Why. I was trying to explain this guy like Vince does. They know they, just, they have the money in front of them. They just don't see it. For some reason, I, they, they don't see it. I mean, as much as I, I'm not a huge fan of the gimmick, but I am a good, a big fan of Ty. He's a good wrestler. And I mean, if they could tweak that stuff a little bit, I mean, keep the ten stuff, keep the perfect ten. I'm not saying take that out. That's his whole thing. And if you take that out, he's he's definitely it's gonna like, die out. It's hype. It's but, like it's, it'd be the new yes thing. They have the new yes guy. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> they just don't use it. I, I I don't know if they're just trying to slow build, but this is not even a build. It's just hey, we brought you up. You're gonna be the guy who's out there to make to bring people to the arena to watch God. The, the early stuff. Like, and, I, and it's like explaining I don't this guy know. too. He's like, oh no, his perfect ten gimmick is boring and, and, and bullshit like that. I'm like. You need to go back two years ago, and if people out there are ever agreeing with this guy, you guys actually need to go back two years ago to when Ty Dillinger would open NXT live events. There's lots of footage. There's literally tons on YouTube of him opening live events. The crowd literally, like, going nuts for this guy, and he would cut the most heel promo ever, and then the crowd would the crowd would love it. They would love his heel promos. He, like, he would I think Ty could be a good heel. He, he, has the be perfect, a good he was a heel when he started this perfect 10 gimmick. And it was right. gold. They peep the crowd would go one, one, one at him. <laughs> like it was pre- it was it was great. It's such money, but just, they don't use it. it it's it's no, terrible. They but they they he, want he they want to put fucking other than English Ray, and, probably and, the most improperly yeah. used. But they put Kurt Hawkins on TV and Aiden English because you know those guys make more money. They, those guys sell more than Ty Dillinger. Yeah, you have so many Kurt Hawkins shirts in the crowd for sure. Unbelievable, man. Like, let's have a rap battle between wrestlers. That way we can not put Ty Dillinger into, the, into a match. Like, I don't understand, man. I, I'm a wrestling fan. I want to watch wrestling. I mean, gimmicks are cool, but I want to watch the wrestling. I'm here for the wrestling. I'm not here to watch guys talk to each other all day long and not put the good guy or the good wrestlers out there. Let's put the crap and, yeah. and hope that it somehow goes over with some of these dumb casual fans and that's what they're doing. Yeah. Um, one thing SmackDown next week is going to be interesting. We have two things happening on SmackDown next week and that's, uh, the return of uh, free agent, John Cena and oh, another video today. And I, I, I swear to God, I think WWE's Twitter posted it. I'm listening to the guy, the, the trailer guy hyping it. They're like saying, he's like, He's like, questionably the most greatest superstar ever in the WWE. I'm like, whoa, okay, yeah, he's up there, but this trailer built him like he was number one. Like, he's he's better than The Rock, he's better than Stone Cold, better than Hogan, better than everybody. And it was like this most epic trailer. I'm like, how come they don't do this epic trailer for anybody else? 
why can't they use the 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 juice they use to make this trailer for someone to get them over? I'm I'm sitting there. I'm, I laugh when the the, the trailer is like. Free I don't know, agent, man. Had the answer John to Cena. it. I... <laughs> free agent John Cena. Yeah, what does that even mean? What why does that even mean? Free agent? I hope they clarify <laughs> next week when and where and how he became a free agent. Like, did his contract? Does this <laughs> mean that he can jump to Raw? His, his Twitter still says he's a SmackDown Live superstar. I just so don't then, see Cena leaving but, SmackDown, but they're building it like they're saying he's going to leave. It doesn't mean... Right? Anything. Right? Um, Michael Chow in the chat. Do you think Dillinger will be a part of the <laughs> Face of America Battle Royal for the U.S. title next week? Probably not. Mm, doubtful. They're having a Battle Royal next week for the U.S. title, and... Uh, I'm, I, I, maybe, I hope so. I don't know how big the Battle Royal is going to be. If he is, and I'd love for him to win it. That'd be a, a huge twist, but it probably won't. Probably be AJ Styles. Um, there's one point here that when DB was, uh, booking it in the backstage promo, he's kind of like explaining to Owens about John Cena's open challenge and what he did. Did DB like forget that? Owens made his debut answering the U.S. Open Challenge by John Cena. So right. I just knew what it was. <laughs> I just it seemed like he was trying to explain it to Owens, and he like he didn't know. <laughs> Again, this is I think this is one of these moments where WWE puts puts these plugs in and thinks we just forget about shit. Oh yeah. And well, it, they want you to I'm, forget a lot of things about a lot of people. Hmm. I mean, it's that's that's they've been doing that for years. They want you to forget all the crap, but it's hard to forget crap. Yeah, as for the uh, it's right there, Independence Day, Face of America, whatever you want to call it, Battle Royal, Dillinger's in it. Sure, I'll be happy for him. He's actually on TV, but he'll probably be eliminated in like the first five people. I was gonna say he'll be eliminated. Oh yeah, and oh, Styles yeah. will probably win. I think it's going to be, now, I could be wrong here, but I think it's going to be Cena's going to come out, he'll win the stupid thing, and then they're going to do yeah, another Cena-Styles feud. I think that's what's going to happen. Styles and Cena part two at SummerSlam. It's interesting, it's interesting. But it's uh, That's actually, I'm sort of looking forward to that next week, because I just want to see, I, look, I just want to see who's the number one contender, because right now there's so many people that don't have an exact feud going into Battleground. I know we still have to wait for Great Balls of Fire, but Battleground is literally almost around the corner, and you have, like, what, one match set up for that already? Right. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, man, and I know you're probably pissed off about it too, but this probably means that Owens isn't going to wrestle next week. So Owens hasn't wrestled in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> what is the point? Or maybe I hope next week that... He thinks he's not, and then Shane's like, "Oh no, you're not uh, off the, you know, you're not off duty tonight. You're gonna have a match too, or maybe he." That would be good, but I just don't see it happening. Hey, maybe he makes uh, Owens defend his title against John Cena next week. Maybe John Cena is not in the Battle Royal. And... Mm, that could that that could yeah. be could be it too. I didn't think about that one. But uh, as for the announced uh, battleground match, uh, Punjabi prison match is set for battle. Yeah. God. <laughs> Jeremy all announcing something that we knew that was going to happen three weeks ago. When he got <laughs> beat. Um, and he, he was like boosting it up, and like I knew he was going to bring up Great Golly. Like I knew before he even say it, I'm like, oh my god, he's going to break out Great Golly, isn't he? He's, like, no, that, he's that's their hero over there. Golly. So I mean, I get it. And uh, oh my god, so they're going to have a Punjabi prison match. Oh boy. Uh, if you guys haven't seen any of them, I don't know if Ty, if you've seen me. I, I, I would suggest you go watch it, but don't get your uh, hopes up that it's going to be anything good. I didn't. Right. <laughs> I've, I've heard mixed spot. reviews on it. <laughs> I think they're... Uh, is either Undertaker doing something to someone, or Batista powerbombing Undertaker through both sets of bamboo, and like he went through both. It, it was crazy. Uh, other than that, the the other one sucked. I think the one with the Great Khali was terrible. And I don't see this one being any good, because Jinder Mahal is... Good at drawing heat, but he's a stiff ass wrestler, in my opinion. The guy just doesn't move well in the ring, man. He's just... See, I think I, I like Jinder as a wrestler and as a heel. I think he's a perfect heel because there's not really any good ones anymore right now, anyway. And I think he's a really good heel, and I, I, he's been, he's a pretty good wrestler. I mean, he is a little stiff. I will agree with you on that. He's a little stiff, but but I mean, he's facing Randy Orton, who is also one of the stiffest people on earth. He's got to do something with his voice. He's got, he's, to me, it's like, it's, there's no... He sounds too Canadian, first yeah, off. He he's too, like, 
boring, man. I can I can sense I can, the the words are right. The script is there. Yeah, he just needs to put a little like oomph into it and, and make he it. He needs to be more Indian. He needs to come out there and yeah. be more Indian. He's I mean, he is he's accent. right now. He is too Canadian, and I mean, he's from Canada. I, I'm not blaming him. That's the way he talks. But it, it you got to force yourself to be a little more. If he would just come out like he did almost this week and speak Punjab half the time, I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's what Muhammad okay Hassan did. And Muhammad Hassan was literally, to this day, I think, is the, the biggest heel ever the Derby's ever had. And he was a great, good, it was a good wrestler and a great heel. I mean, it was, that was a good, a good one by, by WWE. He's second coming. He, and as much as he has to be his own dude, he's got to be at least somewhat close to the second coming of Muhammad Hassan if you want to get credible as that, you know, as a heel that I can say, okay, this guy, this guy's got it. Like he's, to me, he's, right. like, he's almost there. He's got a few tweaks. He still needs to get, you know, get into gear, and hopefully they're going to do that and work with him with that. And I, I obviously think they are, and I obviously think he wants to. So we'll see what happens. As for this, you know, that great diet. You know, he's he's definitely working hard. You know, this <laughs> job. <laughs> I'm not. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not looking forward. To I mean, it. I, I mean, I, it, it, it's something but, exciting that yeah. you can put into battleground because there's nothing else that yeah. about this that excites me. So I mean, like it's a, it's going to be a little interesting just because they haven't done it in a long time, but. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not thrilled about it. I knew that was going to be the stipulation, though. I mean, it was inevitable. Yeah. Uh, Michael Chow saying, "I like the Jinder, but the gimmick is overplayed. We had great Kali Muhammad Hassan. Why can't he just be a, a heel? That's just a heel." See, I, I agree with that too because they had Rusev doing that same kind of thing like a year ago. Yeah. So uh, you're just you're literally Rusev copy and paste, that copy and paste. As a heel guy, though, but he's not on TV. He's doing it on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. He, he is, he's he's already putting himself over, and he's not on TV. <laughs> yeah. So when he comes back, I, I I saw the footage when him returning to live event a couple of days ago, and he got a massive pop. So I I think he's gonna get a good reaction when he comes back. So. Um, uh, I haven't smacked him this week. Uh, oh. uh, fashion Files this week was really yeah, good. A, I, that was a really good vice. segment. Yeah, yeah Matt, Fashion funny. Vice. Yeah. That was pretty funny with the whole Ascension thing. I was, that was funny. Ascension has some personality. It was yeah, great. I, I like the Ascension, and I think I, that was funny when they're, oh, no, we, mm-hmm. we only listen to grunge core and metal. Like, yeah. we, we can't go to see to any money. Yeah. And then at the end, they're eating the cheese, they're drinking yeah. the tea, and they're freaking, and they're taking the tickets. I'm like, okay, this is oh, funny. God. Yeah. <laughs> at least they're being used. They're not, like, subject to dark match or not even on TV. Right. <laughs> But, uh, At least they got a segment, man. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, God. And uh, I talked briefly on it earlier, but it literally just led to the New Day cutting a promo Usos, but Hype Bros, man. Crickets. Crickets. They're so boring. Crickets, man. I just I can't. They're not hype. It's boring. It's, oh, they've, they've, they've had their time with the Hype Bros. They should have had yeah. it. What paper he was? It was a money. Oh, when did they come back there? Was it money in the bank? Uh, yeah, like a, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, they had yeah. Well, Zack Ryder turn on Mojo Rawley there. That's what they should have done. Well, I mean, I get that they want to. I mean, they can't kill another tag team yet. I mean, it, like, like you said, it's going to happen. I totally agree with you on that one. I yeah. just uh, they're boring, and Ryder Ryder is a good wrestler, but he's also boring. And Mojo can't. It looks like he's gained a little weight, by the way. No, too. Like he. Chat. He thinks they're the attackers now because the attackers are still on the loose, according to the fashion vice. So he thinks See, that yeah, uh, it could be American Alpha. I, Greg just put I disagree. I think that it's going to be a completely new tag team. I think it's going to be something they put together or heavy machinery. It, oh God, that would be awesome. No, <laughs> heavy machinery is a baby face, and they need to get the run in NXT. No, I think I think it could maybe be AOP. Maybe they're going to have AOP, but but then I don't. I don't know. I don't know. There's yeah. no good tag teams right now. And it could be a single person. It could be a singles guy who's out there just saying, I'm just going to take you guys out. Yeah. You know, who knows? Who knows at this point? Yeah. Um, that's for the rest of SmackDown. Uh, <laughs> the lack of a women's title match that we got was probably the worst. <laughs> that was terrible. I, just, I, I thought we were going to for sure get a decent match, especially with the, the ring introduction. You know, you kind of sense that something's going to be good when the ring introductions happen after the entrances, and you're like, okay, yeah. there's going to be something good here. And let's say the match lasted a minute and 30 seconds. What yeah, the it was, was that? I have some higher hopes for Lana, but she just... I mean, she looks okay out there. It's not terrible. I, I Honestly, I don't think she got pinned. I think her shoulder was up, so I think yeah, we're probably going to have this match for the third time. Twitter. 
I, a lot of I saw it live. I'm like, uh, oh, I don't know about that. There's a certain but, kind of pen. I forget what it's called. That it was just a, it was a certain kind of pen. It was legal. I don't know. It, it's just a bunch of bickery on Twitter. But it is what it, it. It doesn't erase the fact that that's probably the worst women's title match I've ever seen. Oh yeah. That was pathetic. Lana, Naomi way to better starting to pick. lose her. Lana, or I mean, uh, Naomi's starting to lose her her thing too. The whole glow thing's getting annoying. Yeah, her glow. <laughs> I mean, it's just. It, I don't know. I feel like they could work with her a little bit more. That stupid hair thing she wears on when she comes out, that's annoying. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, she's she's attractive and she's athletic as can be. She's definitely yeah. the most athletic of the females. And I, I just don't think she's a title. I, I wish that she was in the money in the bank yeah. over somebody else, you know, maybe yeah. Charlotte, you know, something, something like that. And uh, speaking of, the rematch shouldn't even happen this week. With the result that we got, why yeah. have to... That what made no to? sense to me. If you're going to have her win anyway, then who cares about the first one that it was... The, let, let let them have the controversy. Controversy is better than them going, all right, we're going to fix it, and then we're gonna we're not going to fix it. We're just going to let her keep it. Like, so what was the point really of the whole thing? do this to make her a two-time Money in the Bank Women's Champion? If they do that... I think they did. That I is did. so bad. I can't... For, for Carla, who's my girl on SmackDown, I'm like, come on, really? Why can't they just let her do that on a pay-per-view, on Money in the Bank? That would have meant so much more. They tarnished the woman's Money in the Bank. Ladder. Oh, yeah. The first ever. Like, God damn, really? I really wish, and it's more tarnished now than it was before. I would have rather them just let Ellsworth do the whole thing, let, let it originally play out, let Carmella write it out, and, and she's going to have heat. She can become yeah. a heel, like a hard heel, and and we need another women heel. Right. So, I mean, let's let's do it. Why not just... We can shove this down people's throats. That's something you can shove down somebody's throat, and I'm okay with it. Yeah. Because uh, it, it it makes sense. This makes no sense. Now I'm just like, okay, even if they make her a heel, I'm still going to be like, uh, who cares? It was close. Who cares? I thought, I thought Becky might have – they they were actually going to go with Becky because there was a couple instances there at the end where it kind of looked like Becky was going to do it. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Maybe Becky's actually going to be the Money in the Bank winner, and I, I could have went behind that, but – I, I'm still going to get behind my girl Carmella no matter what. And oh, of course. She, uh, a lot of people are saying she might not actually cash in, and, or she'll cash in and she'll fail. I actually think she'll be successful when she cashes in. I, I, I think that she will. I th- Honestly, my opinion, I think that they're going to have Lana win the next time her and Naomi phase because that's what they like to do and just keep doing the same thing. I think Lana's going to come out and actually win, and she'll she'll do it dirty or some kind of way. And she'll win it, and then Carmella's going to come out that night. Whenever Lana or whoever, I think it's going to be a lesser person. They're not going to let Charlotte come out there, win it, and then have her beat Charlotte. I mean, that's not going to happen. They're not going to let her beat somebody good. It's going to be somebody not good. (laughs) Michael Chow actually, but Lana receives more title shots than any woman on the SmackDown Live Women's Division. If they have Lana versus Naomi at Battleground, I'm going to lose my shit. (laughs) I agree. I don't understand how Lana still gets gets title shots after title shots. Before she's in a Money in the Bank ladder she's match. Two main roster matches and both have been <laughs> title shots. <laughs> and both of them were terrible. It, uh, it's so stupid. It's just so stupid. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It, uh, good for my girl Carmella. It was just terrible, terrible booking if you had the same result out of both situations. They really just killed any hype you had for that woman's Money in the Bank match. Seriously, like a first time ever. You really just killed it. Like, I'd be... Pissed off if I was a woman right now backstage, man. If they did that, I and there were no really, it. no, not any really good spots either. I mean, there was like maybe one or two, but I was expecting some big stuff. I mean, if you're gonna have this, this stupid thing again, then why don't we actually make it look good? If you're gonna keep ruining it with the commercials, it ruined it. Right. I, I, you couldn't see anything. They're all we're gonna do this picture in picture thing, but we're only gonna do it for the hype bros, and we're not gonna do it for the freaking main event. Yep. <laughs> it just doesn't it, that ruined the whole thing for me. It yeah, ruined the entire thing. Because uh, there might have uh, been some good spots, but we didn't see them. No, nope, <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> if people were there, they got to see them. Good for them. Yeah, but, congratulations, yeah. San Diego. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, no, who cares? <laughs> I want to see it national wide. I want to see it. I ain't in San Diego. I want to see the damn match. <laughs> and I guess another thing we can take from SmackDown, as uh, Greg just put in the chat. I guess we got a Sami Zayn and Mike Bennett feud because Sami Zayn interrupted Mike and Maria before they could even talk in their cringe entrance. I mean, I love the theme song. I don't know. I got theme song stuck in my head, and it, which won't. It, I don't understand why it loops. But 
interrupting them was probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. They're like, oh, shit, I got a match, though. I got a match. I got to go. <laughs> and then, hey, That was hilarious. But uh, that whole Bennett, or whatever, that, they suck. That They've already... They've already ruined uh, both of them. That's for terrible. Me. I know it's terrible. <laughs> they killed it. I'm like, are you? Why didn't they just have Maria me? be in the women's division because we need another woman in the division and have Mike go in and he can be a mid-level card guy? But uh, ah, it just I'm, makes no sense. I'm thinking that uh, we're gonna get a Mike Bennett and Sami Zayn feud, which I'm actually interested to see because Mike Bennett's a good wrestler and yeah, Mike Bennett's a good wrestler. Zane, him facing Sami Zayn is actually gonna be pretty sick. So. We'll see I'm what tired of Zayn and Corbin. Then, like, that's happened a be, billion times. Yeah. I, I, if it's gonna be, if it's gonna be Mike, if it's not gonna be Mike Bennett, then what else in New Day? Everybody misses opportunities all the time. But uh, yep. Again, SmackDown it's just it, mediocre. Rob beat it this week, surprisingly. Yeah, for the first time in a long time, Rob <laughs> yeah. beat SmackDown to me. I had it six yeah. versus six, six to four was my grade. Still does get no excuse for the lazy bookings on both show. You guys need to step it up. No. And start cutting, cutting this, <laughs> cutting this commercial crap out. Or do more TV, or do more picture in picture because you don't just do it through the gumpy matches like you said. Why would I want to see picture in picture through a match I wouldn't want to see in the first place? Yeah, I don't want to see that match on the TV in general. Yeah. Why is that not a dark? I mean, like I get it. They have they were going for a, con- a number one contender match. Yeah, and it leads to but, Usos uh, booking this you're gonna, battle. I also didn't understand the whole. Let's have them do a number one contender match against the champions. Yeah. So yeah. wait, you're gonna well, wait, wait, wait. Why didn't you have them face the number one contender? Then it would actually be like a number one contender match, not a championship match before the championship match. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, that's the kind of stuff that just it throws me off a cliff. Yeah. Um. So yeah, those are our reactions and discussions for uh, on SmackDown this week, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're gonna get into that part of the show, and that is the list of ten. Ten. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's gonna happen? You just made the list! That's right, welcome to the list of ten, that part of the show where myself and Tyler Jones here has a superstar or a moment that makes the list or is a perfect ten moment and we'll start off with our guest host today and i'll lead it i'll have him lead off in his uh perfect 10 moment of- all right my perfect 10 this week and it would have been easy for me to say braun Strowman because everybody knows of my, my man crush for braun Strowman. but i uh, decided to go a little, little interesting this week i said my perfect 10 was finn balor i i really thought he looked incredible this week you know, he got kind of knocked off in the beginning of that match, but he came back in the in the end and absolutely yeah. destroyed all three of them. Three credible guys. Yeah. And and yeah. he looked really good during it. I was very impressed. I mean, Finn's supposed to look good, but I'm glad they're they're giving him this push of, hey, this guy is really freaking good. You guys got to get into this. Yeah. And uh, for that, Finn Balor got to say a perfect ten. That's right, Finn Balor getting that perfect ten. My perfect ten moment. Of the week is gonna go to your boy Braun Strowman. Yes. <laughs> I'll play the roar here. Just yes. Um, yes. <laughs> that was insane this week. What a way to look insanely credible in a feud with Roman Reigns than to come out, fool him with the ambulance, pretending like he's in the back there, jumping Roman Reigns, throw him on the guardrail, hucking him across the stage, and then lawn darting this guy into the side of an ambulance. <laughs> Just like total annihilation of Roman Reigns. Like clearly, Braun Strowman is not finished with you, Roman Reigns. Oh my God! And the crowd uh, hype for Braun. That was just—it was great. That was probably the greatest opening segment I've ever seen. It made it even better because why would you, why, Roman? Why would you think he's gonna be at the back of that ambulance again? Come on, man. <laughs> oh God, Roman! Come on, but, so you should crazy. be on the list for that. Just yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> but for that, Braun Strowman, this week you got a perfect ten. That's right, he gets the perfect ten. So Tyler Jones, what is your mit? Or sorry, missed your missed. list. <laughs> your your missed list moment of the well, week. my miss this week. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, my my people making the list, and it might be a group of people, it might be one person. I don't know. Whoever the hell is booking the tag division, oh, you yeah. are ruining tag team wrestling. In yeah. both shows, okay, in all three shows, NXT has got two credible tag teams right now. Raw's probably got four or five, but 
nobody cares about any of them other than Revival because they can actually wrestle in the Hardys. But they didn't go any You know, years. but, but, and, and SmackDown, I don't know, uh, eh, eh, anybody, anybody, anyone, yeah, anyone? Alpha, where are you guys? Eh. Where, you guys hurt? Huh? I, I don't, I don't understand, like, yeah. and Road Dog will sit here and, and tweet at people till they're, till he, his fingers are numb, <laughs> talking about how great everything is and it, I, you can't watch this crap and think it's good can you you can't no. sit here book it and say man this is this is good tv we're doing well right now you can't you cannot they're killing they're single-handedly taking the tag division and stabbing it in throat yep and uh for that <laughs> whoever's doing this you know what you just made the list that's right you just made the list especially tyler jones's list you made his list oh yeah um the people that made my list this week. You know what? I'm just going to give it to the whole entire segment and the match after. The whole Miz and the Ball family and, and, oh God. and the match that ensued after for sure makes the list this week. What in the hell was that crap? Useless. Unbelievable. This was the most useless shit I've ever seen on TV. I, I turned it off. I Halfway through, I was... I was kind of laughing a bit when he was taking off his shirt and running around. I'm like, well, what the hell is going to do? And then I heard the end bombs. I'm like, oh, God, this is not going to be good. So I just turned it off right away and went back and watched the the the, the highlights after. And Oh, yeah, also the, the, that stupid actor, Josh Dumel or Dummel or whatever the hell is. No, that was dumb, too. And me on, on commentary for no absolute reason. It had nothing to do with the match. At, at well, one, at one point because Sheamus is in his new upcoming movie produced wow. by Who WWE. Cares? I I agree. Tweet something. Are Don't be on commentary. Yeah, just show him on TV at the side on the, on the front row and be like, "Oh, Josh Dumel's yeah. here promoting his new movie with Sheamus." It's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. He's trying to branch. He out didn't even the- really watch wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't know shit. They're just not doing it the right way. Like They're not branching out the right way. They're, they're not doing, doing anything the right way. Yeah. So for that, the Ball family, the mid segment, the match after, and that Josh Dumbel asshole, y'all. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah, y'all just made the list. That's it. And I'll tell you something else too, man. I Oh, my gosh. It, 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 a lot of people were talking about it's good, but it was all the dumb NBA fans. If you're watching the NBA, you're dumb because it sucks. <laughs> Okay, and I like basketball. I'm a huge college basketball fan, but the NBA is a joke. If you can't, if you can sit down and watch that crap and think it's good, you don't know anything about sports because it's not good. Well, NBA it's people all are a joke. Bra. The, the awards and were that's, on. that's all they were there for, and yeah, everybody's they, like, "Oh, it was the best segment on WWE history." But yeah, because you've never watched it. Yeah, you watched it for that stupid idiot running his mouth. <laughs> oh man, I just. Ugh, I I don't know. I got there's no excuse for what they're doing. No excuse. Look, we said we were we said we weren't going to talk about it. Let's not talk about it. it sucks. So, I don't want to. Let's not feed them. <laughs> so let's end the show with your fan questions, a Q and A session at the end of the show that we're going to do from now on. So let's get into your cues. And the fan and the twi- the fan of the month's already on here, so you don't even have to say mine. And we're good. <laughs> and we'll <laughs> My thoughts are broad and <laughs> broadcasted. <laughs> and we'll we'll give our A's, and then uh, Jones can chime in here too. So I'll start off actually with the uh, the missing co-host, Corporate Cappy. He tweeted the question. To the oh. Show. Yeah. He says, "Who will cash in Money in the Bank first, Carmella or Corbin? Will either of them be a failed cash in? Will they be during or after a match?" Okay. So for me. First person to cash in will be Carmella, for sure. Uh, I think it's going to be either Battleground or SummerSlam. And it's going to be after a match, and she's actually going to be a successful cash in, not a failed cash in. So that is my answer. I I think, first off, they're both going to be successful cash ins. You can't not push Carmella right now. She's too good. And you can't not push Corbin right now. He's also too good. Mm-hmm. You you have to let them both cat. Now, who cashes it in first? That's a toss up for me. Mm-hmm. It really depends on the rest of how the rest of the show is set up, because I think Corbin could do it if he sees a weak link in in one of uh, you know whoever is the next champion. I mean, could, are they really going to put him against Jinder Mahal? I I don't see that. Yeah. So I don't think it's going to happen in, in this reign, which means probably not going to happen until after August. So I. I I think Carmella will probably cash it in first just because I think that there's going to be a weaker 
women's division champion before there's a weaker men's top champion in SmackDown. Yeah. Um, as for the, the, the part, uh, do you think it'll happen before or during a match? Uh, I think it's going to be after the match. I think they'll come Sorry, in. After kinda, or before. Yeah, yeah. I, it'll, it'll be kind of, I think it'll be another Daniel Bryan instance probably yeah. where, you know, it'll be a big, big title match for Corbin or for whoever. Uh, not for Corbin, but, uh, you know, whoever the men's division or the women's division, what, whatever, it's going to be a big match. Yeah. And then they'll come in afterwards when whoever the champion is beaten down, and yeah. they'll, they'll cash it in when they know it's going to be a good match yeah. or when they have a good chance to cash it in. So thank you for the question, Corporate Cappy. Good question. Yeah, Next thanks, buddy. Comes from uh, Glorious Greg at XGilly929. <laughs> How do you feel about Samoa Joe's chance of possibly becoming a universal champion after choking out Brock Lesnar this past Monday night? I actually think it's a good chance. I I chance. really I really like Joe. I, he's quickly becoming one of my favorite Building guys. Good. I mean, I've liked him since NXT, but they're seriously he, building. This I, I really think boring. there's a chance they could they could let Joe run this out for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they really are. It's a good build up. It's so a good with build that choke out. Yes, we do agree, Glorious Craig. He also puts, who do you think is behind the attack of Tyler Breeze and the destruction of the Fashion Files headquarters? I think it's American Alpha, Glorious Craig says. <laughs> I'm just going to go with American Alpha with you, Greg. I, don't know. I really don't know. It's really uh, strange now. Like, I, I can't honestly sit here and think as to who, who and with you saying it could be a mystery team. I'm just going to go with American Alpha. What else are they doing right now? Right. No, I, and I can see that, but I, are they going to turn Alpha heel? And I just don't see American Alpha being a good heel, first off. No. But but I, I think it's they're probably going to throw some tag team together that they've put together. I don't know. They're going to put some yeah. some two guys who aren't doing anything right now, put them in a tag team, and they're going to run it as a new tag team, I'm sure. Because there's no there's not enough tag teams in this division, and you can't call anybody up. Stop from splitting NXT. up teams. Stop splitting up teams. You, you keep splitting up teams, and you're not building any in NXT right now. So yeah. what's the point? What's the point? Uh, thank you for your questions, Glorious Greg. Uh, Juggy Badass, how does Zazel YT? Oh, man. Questions about his boy. He puts, will the superior Samoan, the big dog, the one oh, you hate that Vince keeps making you taste, <laughs> fail, <laughs> fail to defeat, hashtag war, hashtag Roz Reign. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Great. Oh man. I I think he might feel the defeat of Braun Strowman. I think it'd be a smart idea to, like we said earlier in the show, to make Roman look weak for a little bit. I think it's a good way to push Roman too, make him look stronger by beating a guy that that like Roman Reigns, who's claiming that this is his yard. So I think. But are they gonna do that? Way. No. Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> do we want it? Yeah. Will it happen? Probably not. No. Because everything we want doesn't happen, and everything we don't want happens. So I'm already going to say I think Roman Reigns is probably going to beat the crap out of, or Strowman's going to beat the crap out of him the first ten minutes, and then Reigns is going to somehow do some stupid Superman punch over the top rope and put Strowman into the the ambulance. Mm -hmm. Inevitable, yeah. inevitable. Uh, how many F fives will Samoa Joe take? Out? Oh. Uh, great balls of fire. They really need to pick better names, Jackie Badass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say none. I also say none, actually. I was like, you can't, you can't pick Samoa Joe up and do that move on him more than maybe... Uh, I, I don't okay, think I'll say happening. once. I, I'll I say don't once, think but I, I just don't see it happening. Yeah. Greg in the chat was Tyler Jones was Juggy the feud. Greg, I'm not done with you yet there, uh, bucko. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I can take on both of you at the same time. I'm Braun Strowman, so... Roar. Roar. And, uh, <laughs> last uh, question by Juggy. Do you think Zayn will ever get a world title push? Or will he wind up like Ziggler, a great worker who nobody cares about? Hashtag yep. save Sami Zayn. I think that's actually a pretty good oh, uh, sucks, pretty, pretty good yeah, pretty good pretty good analogy there. I, I think he probably will Rumble, be the next. Man. I want him to be the guy to win the Rumble this year. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean would it would it be cool? Yes, but is it gonna happen? No. I, I just don't I don't see Sami Zayn as a big time guy in their eyes. They don't see him as that. Plus, yeah. he's annoying as shit to work with. I hear, and nobody really likes working with him because he's so annoying. Yeah. So I mean, I, I just I think he will be more of a Ziggler type. 
if they make him a heel, I think it could be interesting, but I don't think he'll I, – I just – I don't see it. I don't see it. Yep. And the last set of questions comes from – That's right. It comes from at real Michael Chow, Michael Chow TV on Twitter, and he gets his own theme song because he won it, the Twitter Fan of the Year for 2016. And if you guys want to win that, you will get your theme song for the rest of the year before your tweets. So all you have to do is win the Twitter Fan of the Month, and that's by just by interacting with us here on the show. So Michael Chow's questions are: Was it smart of WWE to do the second money? in the bank women's match or should they have just have Carmella win the first time in a better way we already kind of answered this yeah we answered that earlier yeah yes they should have just let her win in the first one yeah. it sucks um controversy man controversy gets eyes drama gets eyes that's what yeah. people want drama 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 and that would be drama she'd be a heel be perfect but nope let's let's yeah. just do what we did here's an interesting thing here and it's actually uh what we want to do in, in, in the end of the show. He puts, who do you think is NXT's most biggest call-up success? And who is the worst? My picks are Kevin Owens for best, worst Bo Dallas. Okay. Woo, best. <sighs> I'm still going to stick with Seth Rollins, man. The guy, what he's done since being called up. He gets called up with the shield. He's basically what he said. He was the architect of the shield. He gets He, he, he breaks it up. He joins the authority, has like the biggest two years ever as a WWE competitor, and and like he, he he's the only one to cash in at WrestleMania in the main event and like win the title. Like that was like the most shock, one of the most shocking moments in WrestleMania history. So I think the success it, it's behind Owens a lot too. I mean, anything title wise, and I think I, I'm still gonna go with Seth Rollins as the the best call up. As for the worst, oof, so far Ty Dillinger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's been a lot of bad call-ups. Uh, uh, I, 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 well, probably one of the best call-ups I, I, at this point, just because, I mean, I have been watching a lot of old NXTs, and if, if you want to say my personal favorite, uh, Neville. I think Neville's one of the best call-ups so far. Um, but if you're talking a recent memory, I'm going to go with Baron Corbin. I think that Corbin, you know, he had his nice yeah, run in NXT true. for about three years, and, and he's coming up, and he's really starting to look credible. I think they're going to turn him kind of into the, the new Undertaker-esque type guy he was the first which he actually just did a a talk to jericho podcast Uh, go listen to it yeah yeah so i mean (laughs) yeah he wins big matches and i mean if you're gonna you're gonna have that kind of guy he's won big matches he's got the money in the bank he's got the andre the giant i mean he he's gonna win more bigger stuff it's inevitable he's he's good so i I think that he is probably the best worst at this point i'm gonna say bray wyatt because bray wyatt was unbelievable in nxt unbelievable and then you're going to bring him up here and just destroy him. Mm-hmm. He has no family now. He has nobody with him. Oh, Rowan's what? on freaking SmackDown. <laughs> it's, it's, it's brutal. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Um, and for his last question, uh, is it better for Shinsuke Nakamura and, or Asuka to have a manager to talk for them, or is it better to, um, to try to s- and speak for themselves? It's interesting because both of them suck at English right now. They completely suck. Asuka barely speaks any English. I think Shinsuke speaks more English than Asuka. Yeah, but Shinsuke uh, you can't understand a word he's saying even when he does speak. I don't Ooh, think Asuka needs an interpreter. I think, she, I, don't, I think she's good. She doesn't need to say much. No, her she doesn't need to say much. She doesn't need to. Like, look at her, what she's done now. She's without dominant. English. Yeah. It, it's crazy. Uh, Shinsuke, it's it's cringe because it's like they're they're phone speeding him what to say, and it, he, right. I mean, he even knows the hell he's saying half the time. So it, it sucks. But I, I think they should n- just not let Knock More talk either. <laughs> I I think that for now he shouldn't talk. But yeah. uh, now this is throwing it out there because it would have to be a cr- quite a ways into the future probably. But I would think it would be cool if they turned Shinsuke heel and put him with Paul Heyman. Oh. Wow. 
I think that would be really cool because I love Paul Heyman. I think he's probably the best manager, advocate, whatever you want to call him in the history of WWE. Yeah, they can do this whole thing where, like, he's the artist known as Shinsuke Nakamura. So the artist shouldn't be talking, right? He should just be, like, have this presence about him to be. He could be like Prince. Like, they're trying to do with that Velveteen Dream guy, but but he could be a Prince type guy where he doesn't doesn't need to say much. No. He could say little things. He can go out there and just. That's why he's an artist. (laughs) That's so gay. You know, whatever he did the first time. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have to say anything. Yeah. Oh, just, I don't know. It's, Asuka, no, for sure. She's yeah, gay, that, that's, that's stupid, Like the dude. Paul Heyman idea. <laughs> As for now, you just, just say a few words uh, once every two months. Basically. But uh, that's it for the questions, guys. Thank you very much, as always. And I'm going to have to thank, because we're at the end of the show, I'm going to have to thank Tyler Jones for co-hosting with me today. And uh, we're about to go watch NXT together. Actually, we're going to go talk at the same time and uh, and watch NXT at the same time. So, <laughs> guys, go watch NXT tonight. Another yes, we are. Another main event. We got... Uh, My girl, Austin, Nikki yeah. Cross. Oh. <laughs> Facing Austin. Oh. The first ever last woman standing match. So, NXT is going to be huge tonight. We're going to go watch that. So, go check that out. Um, other than that, I'm going to thank Tyler Jones for joining me on the yeah, podcast man. today. Thanks for thanks for allowing me to come on. I really enjoyed it. Hopefully, we can do it again, and hopefully, Cappy's proud of me today. We'll we'll yeah. see here in about ten more minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure he is, and uh, I uh, I definitely will be bringing you back on the show. I had a lot of fun doing this today, and I love you having you as a co-host. So for sure, we will uh, more. Of I you. love you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, guys, I'll, that be, I'll is... be the JBL to your Michael Cole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As, as for that, guy, it's gonna end the show off. We're gonna wrap it up for week number twelve. Of of the Lowdown Show Brand War or the Brand Wars on Noah's Part Wrestling Podcast. Uh, we are your <laughs> leading WWE podcast that reacts and discusses Monday Night Raw from the past week. And we have our show broadcasted live right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com. Live! WP live. Or on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, or on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You can follow the podcast also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram by searching up No Holds Barred WP. All links for you will be down in the description below on our YouTube video of the podcast. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. He is Tyler Jones, one of the Nashville boys, or the Smashville boys. Whatever. Tyler Jones underscore 22 on Twitter. Yeah, go follow go me. Give him a I'm follow colorful. <laughs> and as always, me and Tyler are reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. On the lowdown. What you do now? Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> what you got? Music, you on the street. Put back, put back, and you have to set